hanging out in Brooklyn. We got the Navy Yard over there. Uh, Samui, <laughs> great Thai food. And these really fancy apartment complexes here, condos maybe. Thought this was the perfect place to check out the Felt Sport E 85 HP. Okay. The reason is because this is a high power, super fast electric bike. It goes 28 miles per hour. It's got the Bosch Performance Line speed drive. And it just, you know, you look at it, it's sportier, but it's sort of set up for commuting. And it's one of the lighter electric bikes that I've seen lately. Uh, about 85 point, or what am I saying? 45.8 pounds, so almost 46 pounds. Comes in five different sizes. So, you know, that weight may vary slightly. It's light enough though that even with the battery on, with this nice triangle high step, you could lift this up, you could carry it up the stairs. Uh, another feature that I constantly call this out, but you can see it pretty well right now, is this reflective sidewall stripe. See how that just lights up on the side? And then we've got integrated Herman's LED light on the front and on the back. You're gonna stay visible. And that's really important when you're riding in traffic, not just the lights or the reflective tires, but also there's this little reflective sticker paint. Like you can feel it when you touch it, there's a texture and it's only on the felt right here and, and maybe on that uh, head badge and, and on the top. I don't know who would be, you might have like a helicopter over you if, if that's lighting up. The point is this bike is, is very capable and I believe, what, I'm actually here with the owner of Propel Bikes just down the street. This is Chris Nolte. How's it going, man? Hey, how's it going? It's one of the bikes you carry, and I was trying to remember, I think it's $37.99, I right. think. Yeah, yep. so, you know, for a performance high-speed electric bike with higher-end components, hydraulic disc brakes, these are Shimano, 160 millimeter front and rear. It's a very capable, oh, and Dior XT derailleur. It's just, you know, I, I felt like it fit in this environment for people who are trying to get around town, look cooler, keep something lightweight. You know, why do you carry it? Why did you get this bike? Yeah, I think the weight is a really big factor. I think a lot of times the bikes are upwards of 50, 60 pounds. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, there are many people that do need to carry it upstairs and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, having a lightweight bike is, is nice. And it, you know, handles a little bit differently. Uh, and. You know, we, we had a uh, pretty good success with their previous model, the standard Sport E, mm. and I think they made a lot of really nice upgrades, this newer model. That one was not a speed pedelec, correct? That's right, yep. Right, so, you know, over the past couple of years, we've had bikes like Stromer and the Specialized Turbo, you know, high speed, 28 mile per hour electric bikes. Those have been using hub motors. So the Stromer bikes, it's really quiet and they had regenerative braking and stuff, but it was rear heavy. And frankly, those bikes were just heavy. You mentioned like 60 pounds on some of the bikes. And I think yeah, that yeah. was the case. And uh, you know, this, the weight's a little bit lower, more central on the frame, along with the battery there. And it's just a little bit of a different experience. It's not perfect. You do hear it more. You can hear kind of the wing, like the whining sound. Uh, do you remember how many teeth were on that, that chain ring there, Chris? I was 18 tooth. 18 tooth. So, um, you know, th this, you can't see it because of this nice chain cover, which I'm very thankful for today. I got my jeans on, it's a little cold out. But that thing spins like two and a half revolutions for every single crank arm revolution that you pedal. And they do that to give them the motor a mechanical advantage. And it just seems like it starts and stops so fast on the Bosch system. It's one of the most responsive systems out there. It's measuring your rear wheel speed. It's measuring your crank revolutions, pedal cadence, and it's measuring your pedal torque. So how hard you're pushing. And it's just, it's the, it's a really sporty feel, you know, and, and I'm not trying to do like plan words or anything. It's, it's just, it's a great drive system. And then when you combine it with a bike like this, uh, you know, I, I feel like this is a pretty traditional, like urban, almost a road bike frame. And we have a rigid alloy fork here. Look, it's just super straight. It doesn't uh, taper out at the bottom or anything. What's that called, a rake? It doesn't have much rake. This is a pretty, you know, performance oriented bike. And there is no suspension on it. So one of the things I call out with electric bikes is you tend to ride further and faster and over time, that you can start to feel it. But I feel like they did compromise a little bit. These are uh, 28 by 1.5 inch 
tires, so they, they really aren't as skinny as a lot of traditional road bike tires. They're a little bit fatter. You're gonna get more air volume, and there's a range, and you can kind of cushion things. And then check this out. They've got an adjustable angle stem. So even though this is a flat bar, sure, if you want to, you can put that way forward, and you can get that aggressive feel. And you can get the larger frame. Remember, there are five frame sizes to choose from. There's no step through that I've seen. Is that the case, Chris? There's not not this year. No. Not this year. Okay. So, you know, everyone who gets this is going to be dealing with that taller top tube means a higher standover height, but you can still dial it in and get a, a more performance oriented feel. Or if you're like me and you're sensitive, you can angle that up a little bit and you can take advantage of these ergonomic grips, ergon saddle. We were saying these pedals almost look like the ergon pedals too, but they're felt branded and we couldn't, we're just going to go with that. It's a platform plastic with a or tread, almost like skateboard deck, grip tape. And I, I'm not someone who wears cycling shoes a lot, clip-ins and stuff. I just might wanna go to the office with something like this, be able to take it in, put it near my desk maybe. And these pedals are gonna offer a good combination of grip, uh, but you're not gonna scrape up your shins as easily if you slip off. It's it's a nice, you know, those combined with these alloy fenders, they're, they're very solid. I haven't heard a lot of rattling when I've been riding on this at higher speeds, which is something I think about as well. Like. I don't know, I'm trying to paint a picture for you here and say, on the one hand, this isn't a comfort cruiser where you're upright and chilling, you're, you're able to go fast and they've done a little bit in the way of comfort, but it, it really is more of a rigid, instant transfer of your pedaling power directly into the bike, very efficient, high speed. Do you feel like I'm getting that right, Chris? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think with the adjustable handlebars, you can get a little bit more of an upright position, but uh, definitely, if we were to do that, I'd probably want to put some sort of suspension seat post. I think that would Good be point. Yeah. probably one of the top upgrades I would recommend what do you for recommend? a bike like this, what like do a body get? float the suspension body float? seat post. I mean, body float's great. The Thud Buster is a good one as well. I think we're more commonly selling the body float. It's a little bit more fine-tunable and, yeah. and really dialed in there. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty cool part. This is a standard 27.2 millimeter diameter seat post. So you'd swap that out. Keep in mind, any of these seat post suspensions, they have travel, which means instead of being able to bring your saddle all the way down here, it's it's gonna there's gonna be a few inches at least of uh, height that you're gonna need. And this is set up for me right now. I like to have my saddles really high so I can get full leg extension. I don't like to be like squatting down when I pedal. I like active riding and when you're when you're on smoother terrain, you know, this street out here has been paved recently. It feels great. And this is like a race car. It's just you hit those bumps, you start to feel it. You might have noticed the lights just turned off. I guess the display auto offs after a few minutes. Right. There's generally settings you could change how long it takes till it actually turns off, but uh, it, it will turn off on its own. Okay. Very cool. I love that they squeezed bottle cage bosses onto the frame. A lot of times electric bikes don't have room for those, especially when you have a battery mounted on the down tube. But again, because this is traditional diamond style frame, high step, they're able to do that. They even have bosses for adding a rack on the rear, but they've got this really fancy rack. It's got really oversized tubes right here that are kind of uh, protruding from these seat stays back to this carry more rack. Got paneer blockers on the side. That can even be an anchor. Sometimes paneers have a little lever on the back that sort of clips in, keeps them from flapping all around if you're going at high speed, particularly relevant to this bike. And then this plastic plate that actually clips on and gives you all these different mounting configurations for adding a basket or certain bigger racks, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you've got a bunch of accessories at your store. What do people who buy this bike usually put on it? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think if you want to keep it lightweight, probably just a single pannier would be a good way to go or a basket or something like that. Uh -huh. um, I think that that carry more system is really nice. I think for myself personally, I'd probably run a single pannier. Yeah. And then Which side do you put it on, by the way, Chris? Dude? You know, it really varies. Uh, I don't know. I guess I usually put it on the right side. I don't know why that is exactly, but I don't well, if know. You if you get off your riding on the road, you like hop off to the right of your bike, like if we were over there, and that way you can get stuff off your bike without standing in the road. Right. Yeah. You know, something like that. The, you, the paneers are really great. It's just then you want to take them with you so no one steals it versus a basket. It's like it's an empty basket. Who's going to sit, you know, and then you can leave it on. Be a lot less likely. Yeah. Just some different options that we're kind of yeah. dinkering around with this at the shop. Yeah, to see the um you're gonna take it off just for removing it so there's basically there's a little lock here and this just kind of slides off okay very similar to the rack time system uh, but it's just a 
I guess in some ways probably a copy of the rack time system, yeah. but it works just as well. And imitation is uh, the best flattery or something. So like, uh, not quite lined up here. Oh. There we go. And that's it. Yeah. There's a, and by the way, a little bit while we're riding, a little bit of rattling going on here. Just keep that in mind. The fenders feel very solid. Like sometimes you get fenders with plastic uh, twister knobs and stuff, and they can rub and and make noise and even come come off and you know the fender can come off this is is two set screws in here really holding this on two struts another interface here and then down there so four on the back and then a couple on the front they're very nice fenders uh, the battery pack here i noticed is the bosch power pack 400 we're starting to see 500 out there 25 percent more capacity but that increases the price of course this is about uh 5.4 pounds versus uh, 5.7 pounds so there's not a huge weight difference and the cool news is that this is a forward compatible system so the new 500 watt hour pack can can interface with this same uh i don't know what interface <laughs> it can clip right on the same it's the same exact size and i like these batteries because they can be charged on or off the bike they've got a little led battery indicator on the side so you can see how full it is even if you're not with the bike otherwise you just use the display up there it's got a really solid key core right there so it's not going to get ripped off your bike without a bunch of effort and then there's this loop so if we take it off do you have the key chris maybe you can there we go you were so close there we go yeah yeah real easy to carry you don't want to drop your battery so having a big loop at the top is is nice like bosch designs these really well and there's even rubber in there so it's, it feels like they're pretty well sealed against water and if you're someone who's out today it's been raining so we've been reviewing bikes with fenders <laughs> and uh just nice to see that all the electronics are really really well done oh. you do not have to have the key in right. in order to to click it down i didn't want to, want to show that right so, yeah, yeah yeah so see we've just set it on there and then you just click it in make sure that it you hear that click and you know it's not going to come loose and then check it out internally routed cables so everything's really clean and out of the way if you're going to hang this on the back of your car or a bus rack or something it's not like you're going to get snagged up all the cables are really well wrapped up front too they just look nice the shimano hydraulic brakes have two finger levers you really don't need that much effort to activate those and then they're adjustable reach so you can you can bring them back a little bit if you're someone with smaller hands or you're wearing gloves because it's cold out and then the display i'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and yeah check it out it comes right off so you can easily bring this with you if you're parking at a rack bring the battery into the office charge it during the day take this off so it doesn't get too much sun wear or maybe scratched if someone's bike tips at the rack i'm gonna go ahead and turn it on before i do that i want to point out this micro usb port on the right you can you can plug in your phone or you can plug in an mp3 player or something or maybe even an additional light like i love that this one has lights built in there's even a physical on off switch for the for the front light but you're not gonna have to worry about triple a batteries or someone just coming by and taking the light because they're they're screwed on like they're built right into the system they're powered by that same pack so maybe you get this bike and in a couple of few years you've ridden it a bunch and the battery is getting kind of worn out you swap it out you've got a brand new battery and everything still works it's all powered by the same light or battery pack now we're up here at the display press that power button see it jumps right to life pretty quick it does swivel forward and back to reduce glare but it looks pretty good right now we've got battery indicator at top with five ticks speed and then all these different levels of assist we're in the highest level right now which is turbo but i can arrow down to sport i tend to use tour the most and then eco and you can see that the range it's got dynamic range estimation based on the last three miles of use however much battery is is remaining and then the level of assist and see it's saying 45 miles i think this battery probably isn't full or maybe someone's been riding it like really fast because <laughs> above 20 miles per hour you really start to you know it's way less efficient i've heard that you know above 20 miles per hour for every mile it's sort of like this extreme ramp in in efficiency loss right yeah it's exponential loss exponential that's what i'm looking for <laughs> so pretty cool the other readouts here, other than range, you can get to by pressing the I button there or there. So I'm gonna do that. You got odometer, trip distance, clock, 
Oh, you can't see that. There we go. Max speed, average speed, trip time, and then back to range. If you want to reset uh, the trip meter, you can go over here and just hold that reset button for, for a second. So I'm going to do that. And then if you want, you can get into the settings by holding reset and I, and that's where you could change to kilometers per hour if you wanted. And then there's the light bulb that activates the headlight and the tail light, unless you turn it off. So let's see if it, yeah, check that out. That's kind of neat. I don't know why, you, why would you want to turn off the headlight? So if you wanted to, you can turn off the headlight and maybe just leave the tail light on. Um, that would be the one thing that you can't do otherwise just by the display. Is there a reason though? I get, most accidents happen from behind or? You know, honestly, I think that it's it's generally a good idea just to have the light on all the time, even if it's daytime. You know, Especially a speed pedal. more visible, yeah. that sort of thing. And yeah, I mean, it is the regulation in Europe to have the light on all the time. So it's definitely not a bad idea. Interesting. Well, you've got that option on this bike and they are aimable and everything. Pretty decent kit all the way around. I, maybe I mentioned this before, but the Ergon grips, these are locking. They're the GS ones, so they're a little bit sporty, more angular, and they do feel really nice. Uh, the trigger shifter, I think you can also click it forward. Yeah, or you can pull it back. So that's kind of nice. Just really, really cool setup. Quick release on both of the wheels. So if you do get a flat tire, you're gonna be able to service that easier, get some help from a shop. These are the Schwabi Energizer Plus with performance line green guard. So the puncture protection is built in. It It's gonna be a little bit tougher if you're going over glass or something like that. Um, let's see, I think we've covered most of this stuff here's a close-up on the the little chain cover it doesn't go all the way back but as such it doesn't rattle or get in the way as much it looks like they've got a little plastic slap guard and you can see there's been already a little bit of damage just from the, the chain hitting since we do have a decent spread i believe that's 11 to 32 teeth back there in the rear and decent decent components uh, and then this is the charger so it's like 1.7 pounds it's a four amp charger a lot of times with electric bikes you only get two amps and it just takes longer to charge. So Bosch has done a really good job and it, you know, it's lightweight, it's compact. You could easily fit that in a trunk bag if you wanted to, or you know, maybe leave it at the office. Do they sell these separately, Chris? So if someone wanted to buy an extra charger? Yeah, absolutely. You could get the standard charger and there's also now an option for a travel charger. Really? Which it doesn't charge nearly as fast. It's about a 2.5 amp charger. Uh -huh but it's about 25% smaller in size. So if it's something you want to carry with you, maybe you didn't have as much space, it's, it's an option I didn't know you that. consider. That's really cool. Yeah. Can I hand this off to you? Sure. We're gonna probably get ready to take a test ride. Uh, more reflective paint right here. I, the, as I've gone around this bike, like I'm starting to see there, it's got some nice accents to it. And I don't know, I just think that's cool. What I might actually, here, let me take this back and if, would you mind carrying this down the stairs and just showing what it looks like? Yeah. Oh, and the kickstand is really good. It's adjustable length. You don't even need to unscrew it. You just pull out this tab. There we go. Well done. <laughs> and then here's this other bike we got going on. We just toss this in the front. That was handy. Right. And hop on. Um, yeah, maybe what we can do is start off with you on the bike and I can just, I can follow you up the, let's get out here into the street. Okay. You get off that super light bike and everything seems huge. Go for it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> do it. This is a speed pedal X, so right. go for it. hear it rattling a little bit when he went over that bump. Nice. Starting off in eco, it's gonna be the quietest. And it just kind of takes the edge off of pedaling since the bike is heavier. But now we'll go up to turbo. Very cool. Get some good speed. Pretty easy to get up to that 20 and beyond. Have to switch gears. Wow. 
We're almost up to the top speed there, but you gotta keep an eye out for traffic, of course. Ride's pretty stable. The Bosch system also has shift sensing, so when you, when you shift gears, it doesn't grind as much, put as much force on your chain or other accessories. Here's another look at the lights when we're inside. This one's pretty cool. It's got a, at least a couple LEDs in the back. You can see the display is backlit. It's got faint blue glow. I don't think you can turn that off. I was exploring the menus and I think it's always on. Uh, and then the front light, really bright. Pretty awesome. Sweet. <laughs> well, riding in traffic, want to be safe. Chris, I appreciate you helping out today, um, letting us, Get a good test ride in the city. That's the Fort, it's the Spelt Sport E85 HP. I think that's it. We'll have all the specs back at the website, electricbikereview.com. Of course, ride safe, have fun. Any other thoughts? Yeah, just enjoy. <laughs> we did it. <laughs>